to chapter 6, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, the first book of your New Testament, Matthew chapter 6. Uh, we've been uh, preaching these last few messages on Lord, teach us to pray. Uh, the idea of the, the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer we find in Matthew chapter 6, as his disciples had cried out for him and asking him, Lord, teach us to pray. And this is the prayer that Jesus turns to. The guiding principles here that ought to dominate our prayer life and open our eyes up to how our prayer life can be something more meaningful to us. Maybe even more, more results that we would see. That we'd have a greater uh, awareness of God's work around us and in our life. So we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 and we're going to read verses 9 through 13. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13. Would you stand please for the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, help us. Every day, we need you. Every hour, we need you. Every moment, to be separated from you, Lord, is what hell must be like. To know that you're not going to come and help. To know that there's no hope, Lord. That must be an awful way to live life. But we are not like that. Because of your promises, we know that you're listening and that you care. And so we know you're near. And we're asking, Lord, for our daily bread, for our daily struggles, for our daily needs, be there for us, Lord. We say these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. And you can be seated. As we pray. And we've been talking this series a little bit. The messages are up on the website if you're interested. But uh, it, it, as we pray, we've put a lot of emphasis on the first couple verses of our Father in heaven and how hallowed your name is and last week on your kingdom come. Everything focusing kind of on the Father and praising Him and what His plans are. But I don't want to leave you with the impression that your needs are not important to Him. We should always start with praising Him and lifting Him up and understanding that He is God. He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is magnificent beyond our imagination. But that does not mean for a moment He doesn't care about what's going on with you. We should start with praise, but there's nothing wrong with moving into what you're struggling with. Today we want to talk about give us this day our daily bread. In this prayer... And in this request, it's interesting that this little moment here in the prayer, prayer is moving from heaven's purposes, from God's kingdom, from God's character, and it's moving down to humanity's trials and troubles. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we're recognizing a few things. We are recognizing above all else our desperate need for him and his ability to provide those desperate needs. And even then as we say desperate, some of those needs may not seem so desperate. Our daily bread. Lord, put food on our table every day. Can we have something to eat every day? And you may think that's such a trivial thing for a church that's located across the street from a supermarket, three Mexican restaurants, uh, 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 two Whataburgers. You know, we got five Mexican restaurants on Weber Road. We got two Whataburgers, one at each end. We've got whatever else is around here, two Subways, one at each end of the street. You would think we wouldn't lack for food. But we live in a world where most of the world, boy, to get that one meal a day is a struggle and a hope and a prayer. In the world Jesus lived in, eating that night wasn't always a sure thing. And even right here in these United States and in this city and in this neighborhood, there are those that whether they're going to get to eat tonight is not a certainty. And when we come to him and we pray, give us this day our daily bread, it is an attempt to say, Lord, look down on us from the heights of heaven. Would you pay attention 
to what's going on in my life. Would you look in, Lord, and help me? And we may think that's rather, that's rather bold of us. That's rather uh, arrogant of us to think that uh, the God of a universe as big as ours and a planet with oh, six billion people on it, that he would have time for you and me. But look what the Bible tells us, though. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. That means he's watching you. He sees you. The eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Who are those who fear him? On those who hope in his mercy. Do you hope in his mercy? Is that where your hope is placed? Well, then maybe God right now has his eye on you. On what's going on in your life, of what you're struggling with, of what you're lacking. Here is a comfort here, folks, to say, God's eye is watching me. I wonder sometimes the way it goes, does he even care? But here you have a promise, he is watching. On those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. God is not going to let you starve. I know it's on Veterans Day. We have various stories and we've read the books and we, we are amazed at those who have gone through POW camps, those who have been in refugee camps, those who have been captured by enemy forces, those who have been victims of attacks. And, and it is a struggle just to live and to eat. But here's a promise from God. I got my eye on you. And I'm going to save you from death. I'm going to deliver your soul from death. And I'm going to keep you alive in a famine. God is saying, no matter how bad it gets, I will hang on to you. Your life will end. Your term will be over when God calls you home. Until then, you and I need to trust that even though he is high and lifted up, even though he reigns over the heavens, even though his name is so hallowed, we cannot even approach it. He is looking down at you and me. He's got a kingdom coming. He's laying out plans to conquer evil and, and wipe it from the earth. But at the same time, he's looking into your and my life. And our feeble cries come up to him. And he hears each and every one and says, I will not let you die during this famine. During this layoff, your family will not starve. During this disease, you will not be out on the streets. During whatever tragedy, whatever has befallen you, I am keeping my hand on you. Why? Because we pray every day. Give us this day our daily bread. And again, this is God the Son, Jesus Christ, teaching us that when you pray, pray like this. You ask Him every day for what you need. We come unhesitatingly. Why? Doesn't that sound weak of us? Isn't, shouldn't we be pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps? Man, if you got bootstraps, thank him that you got something to pull yourself up by. From every little single thing he has provided, he has put you in a spot of opportunity and blessing. And he's saying to you today, be sure to ask me. Be sure to, to pray this way. Because God of heaven is saying to you, I sent you my son to teach you to pray, to die for you, among other things. But when he taught you to pray, this is what he said. Pray, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus tells a parable where he says, you know, uh, which one of you, uh, when your son asks for a piece of bread, you'd give him a rock instead. You'd never do that to your children. If we come to him for daily bread, would our father not give us something good and not a rock? He tells us also about the, uh, the person who goes to the judge and says, man, it's, it's going bad out here and I need the judge. So he bangs and bangs on the door and it's the middle of the night and he bangs and he bangs and the judge says, you know what? Just to make him go away, I'm going to get up and take care of whatever it is this guy wants just to get him out of here. And then Jesus says, your father who loves you much more than that, don't you think he'll help? When we come to him for daily bread, do it unhesitatingly because it is calling heaven's power down to your trials and tribulations. And praying expresses, praying for our daily bread expresses our dependence on him. We are Americans. We are the kind of people who love the word independence. We don't need nobody's help, not no way, not no how. We've been taught all our lives to provide for ourselves that if we're sitting on the couch waiting for somebody else to bring it to us, then we are absolutely wrong. But Jesus says, no, you need to remember 
That every word that proceeds out of God's mouth is what feeds you. That you need Him every hour, every moment, every time. Praying expresses dependence. And that's why a lot of us don't pray. We don't want to look dependent. We don't want to (coughs) seem as if we're not strong enough or we're not smart enough or we're not rich enough to take care of everything that comes our way. But life is very volatile. Circumstances change in an instant. Somebody runs a red light. A virus gets in your system. A genetic mutation suddenly takes effect. It could be that quick, that simple, and suddenly your life has changed. Your health is gone. The ability to provide for yourself and pull yourself up by your bootstraps is gone. Prayer reminds us we need Him. And that's why we pray, because we do. And God wants you to need Him. I am looking for those that fear me, those who count on my mercy. My eye is upon them. So when you pray for daily bread, remember that food's got to grow and that food needs rain. You've got to have health to pull that food out of the ground. You've got to have all those small things like bugs and, and fungus and other things could stop the crop. But in it all, God's hand is on us to provide us that daily bread. The Word of God tells us, be anxious for nothing. Don't sit there and worry about where your next meal is coming from. Don't fret about what the future holds. Don't let worry and anxiety overwhelm you. Be anxious for no thing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What a wonderful promise here. What a wonderful exhortation here to say, look, instead of worrying, tell Him. You know, sometimes somebody comes to you with a problem and you, you really wonder, do they want a solution? Because they're going on and on about the problem and you're going, I got a solution for that. I know how you can get yourself out of this mess. I know how you can stop this from happening. How many of you all have those conversations and you're just waiting to jump in with the solution and then they didn't want to hear a solution. They just wanted to vent about their problem. Sometimes you wonder, do they just want to hang on to it and keep it instead of resolving it? I wonder if God looks at us like that sometimes and you embrace the anxiety. You hold on to it like a teddy bear because if you're not worried, you're not comfortable. It keeps you up. It causes you ulcers. It gives you other issues and other problems. But you know what? That's what you're used to. And the mere idea that someone might yank that away from you scares you a little bit. Jesus says, let go of it. If you're anxious for something in everything... Don't, be, don't worry about anything. You, in everything, you pray about it. You bring it to Him. You come and tell Him. I don't know if we got enough money this month, Lord. I don't know how we're going to keep up with the bills and still eat. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep both cars. I don't know, Lord. So you come to Him and you bring it to Him. And you let, with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And as an added bonus, guess what? There's a Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 right after this. And it's going to tell you that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There's a lot of power here in coming with every little thing. Look what he says. Don't worry about anything. Well, you know... I I went to God with the cancer. I went to God with the job loss. I went to God with the big things, but not the little things. Look at this verse again. Worry about, be anxious for, no thing. Nothing. What are you allowed to worry about? Nothing. Yeah, but this is too trivial trivial for him. Look at the next part. In everything. Worry about no thing, but in everything. What's the trivial things? Do they come under the category of every? What's the seemingly unimportant? The things that just nag at you. In everything. By prayer and supplication. This is the invitation from your Lord. To cast all your cares upon Him. Because He cares for you. This thing of prayer is all about, I need you. Yes, it's about praising Him. Yes, it's about praying for our community here. Yes, it's about lifting up others. It's also about, Lord, I need you. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What do I need to say? These prayers. These prayers come out 
and they are so prevalent. Sometimes we trivialize a little bit and admit, yeah, we don't need to put every hangnail on the prayer list or anything like that. But we do realize that in everything, we are to go to God in prayer. Every issue you're facing. We, I don't think you could say it more clear than that. Our dependence on Him, our daily, consistent coming to Him and realizing it and what's going to happen as, as you're praying every day and you're coming every day and you're dependent on Him every day, it becomes such a daily awareness that everything you're doing, you're going to start seeing God's hand in. You had testimony this morning. It was the man saw a spoon and reminded him of how good God had been. Listen. When you're walking with Him, when you're praying daily, when you're aware that you need Him all the time, you're going to see His hand in a lot more places than you thought. He is not hiding from you. Have you told Him how much you need Him? So we come and we pray and express our prayer as dependence. And then, then and I, I, I hope you understand what we're doing with this next point here. Because as we pray for daily bread, and I hyphenated here, prayers, not prayers, but prayers, meaning people who pray, I just want to use a short word so it wouldn't take up space. Prayers experience God's promises. When we pray, we find out. Maybe it's not immediate, but we find out. When we pray, we experience that God does answer His prayers. We pray for daily bread. And I can't remember a day I didn't go without eating. Oh, I've gone most of the morning. And into the afternoon. But somehow or other, God made it. And has blessed me. I've eaten every day of my life. I realize there are some of you all, maybe in military training or in some other strife you were in. But it was kind of planned that way. They, 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 they planned not to feed you that day. But at the same time, somehow, God gets us through all these trials, and every day, He provides. Now, you remember sitting at your mother's dinner table, and maybe she sat down something you didn't want to eat. And sometimes we feel like that's what God does. He gave us our least favorite food, but you know what? Even crow can be tasty when you're hungry. <laughs> Everything that you may not like, it may be brought to you because God says we just got to get through this and we'll get to the other side. There are hard times where that daily bread is crusty and rough. Sometimes it's tasteless. Sometimes it's not exactly what you wanted. But it's always a reminder your God has not let go of you. Prayers experience God's promises. People who pray want to get to see God at work and are being in a position, realize that they're in a position where only God can work. When we pray for daily bread, we are saying, God, will you provide? We're depending on Him. And then all of a sudden, we're in a spot where I don't know where that bread's coming from. Out of money, out of time, don't have what it takes, and all of a sudden, God has stepped in. Quite often, God will put you in a spot where only He can get the credit for what He did. Again and again, yeah, we got H-E-B right across the road there, but sometimes it's a miracle that you got the $2 for that loaf of bread. Prayers. Experience God working and see Him. I love this verse. Ever since I first read it as a new Christian, however long ago that was. I have been young, and I was young back then. And now I'm old. Said my knees. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. I came to know Christ in 1979. That's a long time ago. I'm not sure how many years. I can't add this morning. But listen, I believe that verse because I can say the same thing almost. I was young and now I'm old. You know, this whole time I haven't seen his people begging bread. I've seen a lot of people who want to invoke his name and play games with God, but never give their heart to him, coming around asking the church to feed him. I have had people who have known the Lord all their lives, going through a hard time, never ask the church come to feed him, but the church said, we're going to go feed him because we know they got stuff going on. My God makes sure his people don't beg for bread. If this church has ever blessed you with an offering, with a helping you out of a hard time, I want you to know other people came to us before you did. 
Your brothers and sisters were moved upon by the Holy Spirit that, that said, you need some help. You never had to beg us. Or at least I hope you never felt like you did. And you have never, if you have been helped by this church over the years, should feel like, I didn't deserve this. Listen, your God had his eye on you. Your God made sure that you weren't going down for food stamps. You weren't going out for, uh, to the food pantry. You were, your church, his people, he moved on them to make sure we will not forsake our brothers and sisters. I have been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. Listen, God makes sure that because we pray, because we seek Him, because we love Him, it might be tight at times, you might still be hungry when it's over, but He will get you through. And in this wonderful statement here in the psalm, I think you and I need to hang on to it and realize, take a look at our life. Have I had to beg bread? I begged for jobs so I could buy bread. I made myself available so I could do something to earn it. Okay, but God has given us that power. God has given us that opportunity. God has worked in all these situations that none of us are out there with a cardboard sign on the corner. My kids, your kids, you'd cut that arm off before you'd let it see them go hungry. How much more do you think God would make sure his children don't go hungry? I can't explain the needs around the world. Many of these nations for centuries that have rejected God. But we do know this. Where the gospel has gone in, people's standard of living goes up. Not that he's made them rich, but they start eating every day. Give us this day our daily bread. And God will provide. And finally, praying like this points us towards eternity. <clears throat> what do we mean by that? Because the more physical needs point us to deeper spiritual needs. The first part of that praying points us to eternity and then these physical needs point to deeper spiritual needs. That's what we're trying to say. We're just saying the same thing twice here. How does praying for daily bread point me to eternity? Again, it teaches me that I need Him. And that all good things come from Him. Physical needs point me to deeper, deeper spiritual needs. You remember in the Psalms, the psalmist says, As the deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for you. I hunger and I thirst for you, Lord. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You see, these fleshly, common appetites of ours are signs of something deeper that we need beyond just the physical. It's not just food that you need. For instance, Jesus, at the beginning of his public ministry, went out, led by the Holy Spirit, to be tempted by the devil. And what did the devil do with that first temptation? Jesus went 40 days and 40 nights fasting without any, eating anything. And what does the devil do? Well, if you're the Son of God... Command that these stones be turned to bread. And man, when you haven't eaten for a month, you've got to be thinking, man, bread would be good right now. Anything would be good. But what did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes, that hunger points us to something deeper, that we need Him constantly. In fact, Jesus referenced in that statement... Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. From Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. And let's kind of look at that, because that verse is a lot longer than what Jesus quoted. So he humbled you. Moses is speaking to the people about how God has led them to the promised land. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger. And then he fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, what is that passage saying? 
He let y'all get hungry out there in that wilderness so that he could feed you. He let you get hungry and then fed you manna, some you'd never seen before. Why'd he do that? So he might make you know. God can come up with bread anytime. It's him keeping you alive. It's him giving you life. It is him providing. It is him. You live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Before you get that bread, God has declared you're going to find bread. Before you make that money and bring home that bacon, God has said, I'm going to give you the ability and the opportunity to do that. I'm going to give you the health to maintain that. I'm going to give you the giftedness that's required to do that. Some of us may struggle and say, but God, I am not able to work. And yet, what has God done? Put you in a spot to where, yes, He is still providing. Those that are not able to, God knows. God provides for them too. In all of this, we realize that we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We can be fat and full. And we know we can pass away from that. We can be starving. We can pass away from that. God keeps us every step of the way. When I pray, give me this day my daily bread, I am saying to God, I need you, and I know it all comes from you. And this kind of de dependence is a very healthy thing for us. That every little thing, we need to walk around with the idea that, yes, it comes from my Lord. And the more I am conscious of that, the more I see him at work, especially for the big stuff. Because I've learned to trust him in that. That the big things... The big struggles, these little ones, they're training ground for that. When I was young, I was hoping God would get me something to eat at lunchtime. Now I pray that he helps me feed my whole family and maybe a few others sometimes. Our responsibility grows and God gives us bigger opportunities and challenges. But because we saw him successful in the little ones, we now know he can do the big ones. Daily bread in the month of Thanksgiving. He can handle them both. Daily bread and the overwhelming loans. The overwhelming pressures. He can handle it. Because we started trusting Him with the little things, we move on to the bigger things. Is that your prayer life? That because you've seen God do it before, you know He can do it again. Today, let that be your testimony. I'm going to start, Lord. As one of your people, I'm going to start trusting you with every little thing. I keep trying to handle too much. I'm going to pray about every little thing. Maybe you're one of those that you've never really known the Lord, but you said, I always wish there was a higher power that could get me through this. Today, Jesus Christ is saying to you, I came down from heaven. I was born of the virgin. I died upon that cross and rose from the grave on the third day. Believe in me and all this is possible. Believe in me that I died for you and rose from the grave. And the gateways of heaven are open to you. The throne room of heaven is now accessible for you. You have passed from being a nobody to being a child of God. Are you ready for that? We're going to sing here in a few moments. And we're going to be praying here right now. And maybe you're ready for that. And all it takes is for you telling God from the depth of your heart, this is what I want is Jesus in my life. I want to believe. I believe, Lord, He died and rose for me. Are you ready to take that step? Leaving your old life behind and finding the new one God has for you. Today that's possible. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we are so grateful that You have been good to us. You have been clear with us. Thank You for being the kind of God who can be counted on when we need You. Thank you for being the God that answers when we cry out. Thank you for even caring about if we got enough to eat today. So we ask you, Lord, be real, be powerful. Let us see your hand at work every time we get together, every time we go anywhere, every time, Lord, even in the little things that we can see you at work. God, we're praying this morning for those who are 
hungering and thirsting for a God like this right now. That maybe there's someone here today for the first time in their life. Jesus, are you real? And they're answering, yes, I really believe you're real, Jesus. Listen to their prayer. Listen to them as they're saying to you, I believe you died on the cross taking the punishment for all my sin, the sin that keeps me from coming to you. And because you died, Jesus, and won victory over grave and, the de and death with your resurrection, when you rose from that grave, you let me know, I can come to God also. I can have a home in heaven. Today, by believing that, is where it begins. We're ready, Lord, to leave our old life behind. We're ready to leave a dead prayer life behind and instead find one that, Lord, where we see a God who is active in blessing. We love you, Lord, and we long to see you with our eyes. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. We want to see Jesus. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen.